come in from the outside and all the things that you kind of go through because that's just the way life is sometimes. And then you become into the house of God and all of a sudden the presence of the Lord brings healing. It brings breakthrough. It brings that thing that you thought, okay, well, you know what? I just, maybe it's I need to vent to somebody. Or maybe it's I just need to go to that bar and go hang out for a little while. Or maybe I need to just sit down and, 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 and watch a game. And, and, or maybe I just need to go for a walk in the park. And a lot of times we try to fill our lives with things that are just temporary. Things that at the end of the day leave us still having questions. And still leave us in this place of, I need to do something else. But isn't it cool how you can come into the house of God and you can come into his presence. And as you come into his presence, you might not have all the answers, but guess what? You have a peace that the Bible talks about that is beyond any other understanding. That other people look at you and they're like, I don't understand how they're able to do that or be that or accomplish that. And literally you're like, I don't know either, but the thing that I can put on is the fact that it's been the presence. The presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we just thank you. And thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, because as we come into your presence, things happen. You got me, thank you. Because I feel like, even for my own personal life, I don't care about no one else this moment, but about me, I feel like I've gotten breakthrough. Yes. And God, I just say thank you. And God, I pray, Father, that as I preach this message today on stewardship of time, God, I pray, Father, that you would use me to speak truth, to speak life, to help all of us to live a better life. So at the end of the day, we can say to you, our life belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kind of feel like one of those moments like I should just not preach, you know, just, but got to do what I've been told to do. Got to be obedient. But um, got to be obedient. Amen. God says amen. So, you know, that's what I got to do. But um, I, I put my timer on at about 25 minutes and then, um, uh, yes, Donna likes that very much. We'll see if it works, stuff. But yeah, hey, it's going to go off. But we'll see if it works. But um, here you go. Um, uh, it was, wasn't it just to kind of start off, kind of lighten up the mood a little bit? Wasn't it, you know, that first song? What's the name of that first song you sang? Saved by Grace. No, the one that you sang? The Saved by Grace? Saved, Saved by Grace. And, um, and it's it funny because it was like the words were like, glad about it, right? And the whole time I'm laughing because I'm thinking she's saying about about it. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, yeah, about, about it, yeah. yeah. Like, the words, and I was like, wait a minute, that's not what she's saying. But in my mind, I was probably saying about, about it. So, um, <laughs> stewardship of time, that's what we're talking about today. So I ain't going to be an honor of time. So, um, but if you have your Bible, turn to Ecclesiastes, ask me chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 and it says for every thing there is a season a time for every man under heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up what is planted a time to kill a time to heal a time to break down a time to build up a time to weep a time to laugh a time to mourn a time to dance a time to cast away stones a time to gather stones together a time to embrace a time to refrain from embracing a time to seek a time to lose loss a time to keep a time to cast away a time to tear um, a time to sow a time to keep silent a time to speak a time to love a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace. From this scripture, we know that there is a time and there is a season for everything. And really, if you want to do like a major title, the major title of what I'm talking about today is stewardship of our time. You know, and re relax, I'm not going to tell you you need to stop doing something. I'm not going to tell you that, that you're wasting your time. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But really, if you want to have like a sub kind of point or a sub type of title, what I really want to talk about for us today is using our time appropriately. 
You know, there's too many of us that are extending the seasons of our life. You know, just like we just read about that there's this time for me to do this, there's a particular time for me to do that, there's another particular time for me to do this, there's a time for me to do that. But I believe that one of the issues that we're facing, especially in regards to what is exceed as the modern church, is that we've reached a point where we are turning seasons into lifestyles. Where we have gotten to the point where maybe God is, and maybe it just was a season of lack that we were going through, but because we choose not to go through it, and because we choose to stay in this mode of, well, I'm here, I don't know why I'm here, well, there's no one going to help me, well, this and that, and all the other things that we can kind of throw together to make it, is that we've turned a season into a lifestyle. And I believe that what God is trying to tell us is that in order for us to be great stewards of our time, that we have to understand that the season that you're in is just a season. The issues that you're dealing with are not issues that you should constantly be bringing up, constantly dealing with, constantly trying to find a way to get through them. But yet we need to understand that we are to go from season to season to a new season. And as we understand that, and when you look at your current situation, maybe you are in this weird, complicated season where it looks like winter, but it feels like it's summer. Where it's like you can't understand what's going on. But really what I want you to understand today is that it's only a season. And if we live our lives knowing that, one of the things that we really understand is that time is our most valuable resource. It is limited and it passes very quickly. Yes. I mean, how many of you guys have ever been, you know, you know, like somewhere, and I'm trying to give an example, maybe you were online and, 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 and you go and you look on your Facebook account and all of a sudden you see a coupon that is there. And all of a sudden it, it's like a coupon that's been on your Facebook page for like a week. And so you're like, I'm going to print it off and I'm going to the store and I'm getting my discount. I'm getting my free pancakes. You know what you need to understand that I don't give out free pancakes every day. They only give it out on a certain day, in a certain season, at a particular time. And so if you show up to life with your coupon thinking, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it on the wrong day, guess what? You better have some money in your pocket. (laughs) I've never done that before in my life. (laughs) Maybe one time. (laughs) Maybe a couple times. But we need to understand that time is very valuable. It said our time is not our own. We must steward our time in the same way we steward our money or to go or our or of something else or our resource. Like even what Pastor Mike talked about last week is the whole idea is he gave us this definition of stewardship. He says stewardship is taking care of something another person has entrusted to you. And as Christians, we all know that our lives have been stewarded to us by a Heavenly Father who is in love with us, who cares about us. He cares about us enough to make sure that the things that we're living in aren't just something that are permanent, but yet they are a season. And you might be like, well, I, I just don't understand that because I've tried everything to get out of my season. I've tried everything to do this. I've tried everything to do that. And, and, and I'm glad, you, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm not glad that you're there, but I'm glad that you're here this morning because I'm going to give you three things that when you are stewarding our time correctly, we need to understand. Okay? Cool. So the first thing is understand we can't say yes to everything. Oh, my God. You know, I think it was Andy Stanley who said that um, we are not defined by our yeses, but we are defined by our no's. You know, some of us inside this room need to know how to say no. You know, because the thing is, is you have people coming to you with their issues. You have people coming to you with their drama. They come to you with their problems. They come to you with an array of things. And all of a sudden, you feel like you feel so horrible because you just heard everything that they're going through and you're trying to help them. So if someone's talking about, oh, I, I, I need a ride to go over here. You go, okay, cool, I'm going to give you a ride. But I got to hurry up because at noon I've got to go give this person. 
person a ride. I've got to go do that person a ride. I've got to go do this. And all the whole time, you're praying for a job. Well, when do you have time to get a job if you're working for everybody else? You know, and all that, in a sense, it's not saying don't be kind, don't be gentle, don't help people out. But it's the thing of understanding that you cannot do everything. You're not everybody's savior. You're not everybody's hope. And at the end of the day, if they're looking to you instead of looking to Jesus, there's a problem. If they're looking to you to, to solve every single one of their issues, then there's a problem. It's, it's, it's really what, what we call a dependency, that you are making them, you are actually bringing energy to their issues. Yeah. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's, it's, it's not an addiction. Maybe it's just behavior. Is that you are actually bringing life to it because you're the thing that is sustaining them from actually getting out of the current season that they're in. You know, um, you know it's, it's, it's very interesting because Jesus makes some very interesting comments with, with, which I'm going to draw some attention to. The first one is in John chapter 18, verse 35. It says, Then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born. For this purpose I have come into this world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is the truth listens to my voice. Basically what Jesus was saying is that you're trying to put a label on me. And I'm just trying to tell you that I'm not trying to accept that label right now. But this is what I am here to do. I'm here to fulfill a purpose. And so as you say yes to certain things and no to other things, do you know what your purpose is? Do you know what God has called you here to do? Do you know, you know, if I was to come in and give you a million dollars, which I, well, maybe one day I'll be able to do that, believe it in faith, get someone a million dollars. Come on, how much money do I got if I'm giving away a million dollars? Yes, come on, amen, there you go. <laughs> but if I was to write you a check, well, no, let's give you cash, take cash, don't take the check. If I was to give you cash for a million dollars, what would you do with it? Or would you be the type of person, oh, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to hold on to it because, you know, we all have rainy days. Or are you someone that is lit up with purpose, lit up with passion, lit up with a, a plan of saying, you know what, I know what I've been put on this earth to do, so I know exactly where that million dollars would go. You know, are you someone who has the ability? Another interesting comment in which Jesus says, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He goes, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. He is recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord. He didn't say, I am here to wash sheep. He didn't say, hey, I'm here so that I can uh, hang out with folks and have a really good time and we can just, you know, be like, yeah. Well, I want to know 
know more about that. Okay, we'll go to school, we'll get around people that know it, we'll do all the things you need to do, but you still need to understand what your strength is. Yes. The next thing, you know, that Jesus says that that is really, really cool is in John chapter 14, verse 12, he goes, truly, truly, I say to you, he's like a rap raising me, not about it. <laughs> I just need you guys to laugh, that was <laughs> Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Greater things than these he, he do because I am going to the Father. You know, I just love this verse because it's one of those things where, you know, every father wants their son to do better than them. them in a healthy relationship. You know, it's, it's the idea that what Jesus is basically saying is, is that you guys as my disciples will do greater things than whatever I thought and whatever I even imagined. You know, and, and, and so think about that. You know, what are the things that Jesus did? Jesus walked around, he touched people, he healed people, he had the right words to say to people. And I believe that what Jesus is calling us to do is to do those greater type of things, but you can't do them if you're caught up in trying to do everything. Because your time will be swallowed up with the things that aren't important, with the things that you aren't good at, with the things. And so it's so funny because you know, you know, I, you know, even the the like, I, I gotta be careful here. But but the last place that, that I worked for, you know, they had an array of activities for me to do. I call them activities. Really, they were tasks. Okay. And, and really the philosophy was, well, since you're doing such a good job in one area, we want to give you more responsibility. That, that doesn't make sense. Because you're doing great in one area, we want to give you more responsibility and other stuff in other areas. So what you're basically saying is, not that you want everything to look like this, but what you're trying to say is you want to spread me out, which after it spreads me out, it's an abuser of me. It's not a respecting of who I am as an individual. And so many times we let people do that to us. We let people abuse us. We let people stretch us. We let people, you know, come inside of our worlds and, and like all of a sudden we become this dependent. It says we become stretched. We become stretched. We become stretched. And then we wonder why we're tired. We wonder why we're frustrated. We wonder why we're burnt out. We're wondering why we don't want to come to church, why we don't want to be around church people. But I'm telling you right now, it is not the ambition. It is not the desire for us as a pastoral team to burn you. And some of you guys have come from areas where people have burned you. They have not been a respecter of your time. And yet I want to tell you, that's what we always talk about. No, you can't ask that person to do that. Why? Because they're just doing too much right, right now for church life. Because we want you to have healthy families. We want you to have healthy relationships. We want people to love you. We want people to, to, to love us. We want, you know, because the whole thing is the fact that just as Jesus didn't spread himself out, Jesus was like, no, truly, truly, I tell you, this is what I came to do. You've got to know what you came to do, what God has sent you here to do. Realize that you're not called and commissioned to do it all. Point number two, understand your motivation for doing something is key. Your motivation is really, really key. You know, my, I, I have three daughters. I have one of them actually just started crawling, which is like the cutest thing ever. You know, so it's that they'll be in church next next week. I pick them up on the 19th and they'll have to be here next week. And, and, and you'll see her. She'll be like crawling. She'll be like everywhere. She's going to be like, you know, she's like on the move. I mean, how many other people have kids like that? And you're kind of like now like, no, I wanted you to crawl before, but now I just want you to be still. <laughs> And know that I am your father. You, know? <laughs> you guys that don't know that's actually a, a verse. He's still like, no, I am your father. So that was for the unchurched people. But here we go. Um, understand your motivation for doing something is key. You know, I, I remember my, my wife was telling me the story. I'm going to go to my wife. Ah, yes. Hallelujah. But there we go. So I'm talking about my wife. So my, my wife, you know, you know, about 10 years ago or so, maybe a little bit longer, decided, hey, I'm going to do the bar. And, and so she met with the lady, you know, and it was, it was, I guess it was amazing, but I'm going to say it was amazing. They had a great, you know, first session. It's always amazing for the person who recruits you because guess what? you got to pay some money. But um, yeah, um, so it was great for them. And so they had a great old time. And, and she came back. She was telling me about the whole experience. And, and this is one of the conversations where I want to focus on is the lady said, well, what do you see 
Why, why do you want to do this? And, and her answer at the time was, you know, I, I, I just want more money. You know, I just, you know, I, I, just, I just want, you know, I want more money. You know, we don't really need the, the job, but I just want more money. I just want to have more money in my pocket. I want to be able to swipe my card whenever I can. Whatever. And the lady looked at her and the lady said, you know what? That um, you need to come up with a better picture of what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. and, and then she began to explain her story. She began to say, well, the reason why I'm doing this is because she began to paint this picture that as, I, I think she was a single mom, and she, she said, you know, as a single mom, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create an environment for my kids so that my kids can go to college. I'm trying to create this environment. And so she actually began to describe what it is and why she was inside doing the thing for the company. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is, with our lives as Christians, you can't just be like, well, I'm just here. I'm just here to give the Lord all the praise and all the glory. No, 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 no. God has you on purpose. Yes. Yes. And to be a great steward of your time and a great steward is you need to understand the motives behind why you are doing what you are doing. Yes. You know, whether it's the fact that, hey, you know what, at one time, I, I, I woke up and, and, and I was sitting in front of a bowl. And it's not even really a regular bowl. It's like a bowl and I'm on my knees. And I decided from that point of view, I don't want to be there no more. And guess what? It's better to be in church standing up instead of being sick somewhere. Or maybe it's the whole idea that maybe you come from a broken home and what you're saying is, is you know what? I want to marry a man. I want to marry a woman. And I don't ever want to get a divorce. I want us to raise our kids and have a live out somewhere and have a beautiful house. What is it that you picture for your life? What is your motivation? What is the thing that is dri dri driving you? And I said, you find her out, when you figure out what that is, it actually will help you to manage your time a lot better. Because guess what? If you are single right now, and you're saying, I want to marry a man who's not going to treat me bad, guess what? Don't go to the club and try to pick up somebody. Found the motivation for it. That's what I want. Why are you hanging out over there? You know, and, and it's the same thing. It's not just with relationship, but it's the same thing with everything else inside of our lives. Is that if you see yourself as one day being, you know, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, great aspirations. If, if that's you, that would be amazing for you to do. But you know, you're sitting there, and you're sitting there like, oh, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm just waiting for someone to hire me. How many applications you put out today? None, but I'm waiting for someone to hire me. Because God spoke to me about me being a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. It just doesn't work like that. It's the whole idea of whatever's motivating you will be the force that keeps you going. Manage your time is key to having a fruitful life. But not everyone will manage it the same way. It's no one-size-fits-all model of doing things right. So think. What motivates you? Is it the joy of doing? Is it the importance of a task, the ease of doing something? Or is it actually fear, worry about what people will think? Pray and seek the Lord to find out if what motivates you is good or sinful. Yes. Now, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as the Lord, for the Lord and not for men. You know, the whole idea is that when you are working, who are you working for? What are you working towards? As you are doing the things that God has asked you to do, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not by chance. But it's by the fact that you make a decision, hey, I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing this to give God glory and give Him honor. You know, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Just trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Make sure your motives aren't what is some type of delusional idea that you've come up with. You know, don't, don't, don't have this delusional idea of what it is that you think that life should be like. You know, my, I have a five-year-old daughter and her imagination is huge. It's gigantic. You know, but it only encompasses one little bitty thing inside of her world. Every single time she's playing with somebody, she's always playing house. <laughs> the great part about her is that she always starts off the session with a wedding. So I'm like, hey, I'm doing good right there. <laughs> hey, that's some good stuff right there. That's some good stuff. 
You know, she always has like this white dress, you know, like she, she's up in Washington right, right now, and all most of her other cousins are boys, right? And 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 they broke out these dolls that my wife used to play with. And 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 so you know, my I had three girls, so you know, two of them are really, really excited, like, yeah, ah, the dolls, yeah. And the boys were like, no, the boys were like, okay, cool, awesome, and they kind of just walked away. But the joke was in our family was that by the end of the week she would have those boys playing with dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know, them two boys were playing with dogs by the end of the week. <laughs> Why? And you know, but the thing about it is that her imagination is huge. You know, it's, it's the idea about the motivating thing inside of her heart right now is that, Daddy, I want to get married and I want to have a big wedding. I want the white dress. I want this. I want that. I, and all I'm thinking about is, you want money. You want money. You want to spend, you to spend this. You want me to spend that. But at the end of the day, it's a dream inside of her heart. And you know what? I'm not going to smash it. See, that's my time right I'm not going to smash it, I'm not going to destroy it, I'm not going to do anything but sit up there and say, you know what, let's do it. I believe it's going to happen. But you know how it's going to happen? By me spending time with her boyfriend. I mean, in a good way. I'm not trying to say, I didn't say a gun. I didn't say a gun. Y'all just laughing and getting like, no, I'm serious. By me spending time with him and developing a relationship. What's the motivation behind that? Because I want my I want my daughter to marry a great man, a mighty man, a man of God, a, a, a man who's in church with us, a man who sits on the side and he raises his family and he's passionate about Jesus, a, a, a man that, that's not just going to be oh I'm just trying to get my thing done. No, 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 a man that has the heart after God. So I'm going to end with this, and, and, and this is kind of, you know, the last point, is understand you need time to refresh. You're not too busy. And you need to stop, 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 stop saying that. You're not too busy. The thing is, is you just need to say no to some things. Is that you just need to be a great steward of your time. You know, stop being a loner. Understand that it's not in the sense of just being alone that you're refreshed, but there's more, that, that there is an array of different ways that you can be refreshed. Some of you guys came in today and you came here all beat up and all destroyed, and you're like, came here, and this was your refreshing moment. But also understand that it's not only what we do on Sunday, but it's also what we do throughout the week through the Tuesday night prayer, through Wednesday night, you, you know, you know, live groups, you know, or whenever. Your life group meets on Monday or on Wednesday or on Friday. It's about hanging out with folks and getting that refreshment that God wants you to have. You can't do this alone. You know, stop saying, I don't have time to go to life group. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. But you have time to be on Facebook. Well, I said I want to talk about stuff you're not supposed to do. Didn't I say that? Okay, I'll bring it back. Then. I take it back. Okay. <laughs> it, says, it says, whoever isolates himself, seeks his own desires, he breaks out against all sound judgment. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. And so what refreshes you? Get around people who can make you laugh. Get around people who are following after Jesus. People who are following after Jesus and who know how to have fun. If someone is boring, snoring, don't. <laughs> well, invite them to wherever you're going. Because you want to be old, man. want to be around people. Help them. Help them to change. <laughs> get, get outside. Need energy? So, so energy. You know, one of the things that, that I used to, people used to always say to me, if you're feeling tired, you need to go to the gym. Why? Oh, well, I'm going to be more tired if I go to the gym. And, and, and they were like, I was like, I'm going to be more tired if I go to the gym. They go, no, actually what happens is that when you go to the gym and you start moving around, you start getting energetic, you start sowing energy, you actually reap energy. I, I don't really know to be true, but, but that's what they say. She, you, you can say amen to that? She says amen to that because she goes to walk. I know she does. I've seen her for her schedule. It says Jesus was seen in many environments and social settings. And why is that? Because I believe he was reaching, but I also believe that there was a sense of refreshment that was going on. 
It was a sense that as he was doing what God had placed him on this earth to do, how there was just a sense of refreshing. You know, one of our volunteers here who is who's a greeter, she actually works all night, all night, like all night. Okay, let me repeat, while we're all asleep, she's at work, because she's a nurse taking care of you. And, and, and just this week at, at one of our meetings, she, she, she said, you know, one of the things that I love about coming to the house because there's such a sense of refreshment, but she goes, the moment that I step in and I change all my clothes, we're nursing out from the rest of me, she goes, inside of that moment, all of a sudden there's this strength and where I was tired before, I'm awake and I have a smile on my face because she's serving and she's doing the very thing that God has called her to do. And so you're saying, I don't have enough time, I need my sleep, I need this, I need that, I mean, I'm just telling you, as you step out in faith, God meets you exactly where you're at.